Guys, have you ever woken up, had big plans on what you're going to do? And then you realize that just due to the nature of your wardrobe choices, you're now no longer in corporeal form. Well, that's kind of what happened today. So today, since we're doing weird stuff, we are going to talk about the time that I think Lynn Thompson took it too far. This is the Raja 2. So let's take a look at it from above, if we can make it fit on the map. Guys, this is the Cold Steel Raja 2. Now this thing's amazing. Um, and all, every time I every time I think of this knife, all I can think of is the Blue Raja from Mystery Men. I'm the Blue Raja, mother. I fling cutlery. This thing is big. This thing is big. So uh, I'll try to find a spec sheet. I may put it up here, but I wanted to show you guys in real time actual size. So I brought out my floppy number and stick. And on the floppy number and stick, you're looking at eight inches, just about eight inches tip to tail, closed, closed, open. This mamma jamma is 14 inches tip to tail. This thing is enormous. This did not need a pocket clip. I don't understand how they decided they would do a pocket clip, but as we do here, we're going to do some size comparisons. So hang on just a second. Your first knife is the 9-inch overall Migoron Valona. This was a gift from Jared. I definitely appreciate it. This is a great, great knife. But you can see this is a huge knife. This is larger than most people would carry. It looks, it looks like a Delica next to it. So your next knife is going to be... The Spyderco Knives Police, which is a nine and a half inch knife overall. It makes it look like a Spyderco bug. If you've ever seen those, those are the little slip joint versions of their knives. So, as always, your final comparison is going to be the Chris Reeves Sabenza Large 21, which is not a small knife, but is just about the size of the handle on this knife. So, uh, let's get this out of the way and talk about the time that Cold Steel may have went a bit too far. So this is no joke a pocket knife. It has got a pocket clip. It is a pocket clip that in all honesty is almost as large as some of it's as large as some of my folding knives that I own. This is as over the top as you can go with a knife. I do know that they have others that are this size. They're XL versions of things. But this one just is over the top in so many ways. Uh, and the fact is, it's well done. I have had this in my pocket twice since my buddy Tino let me borrow it. It's done with a triad lock, which means not only is it massively oversized, it's massively overbuilt. You could trust this knife. Now, I wouldn't carry this. There's just no way. Um, but I will say, out of pocket, this will absolutely wave with this thumb plate off of the pocket, and it does it terrifyingly well for such a large knife. I have to admit that this thing is incredibly well balanced in weight. It has got some weight forward of the pivot in a large knife. That would be something you would want. The handles are huge, but you can get all the way back here if you want some extra chopping power because it has a choil here, a choil here. This thing is insane, I have to admit. But if you look at how well it's done, how well it's built, everything that goes with it, it is a very good knife. I would never carry this in my pocket. This would be something that would stay in a field pack or something. Um, this would be a knife I absolutely would put a lanyard on. And I don't mean a lanyard like uh, what is on my Sabenza. I mean like a loop lanyard that you could cinch down on your wrist for chopping because you can definitely generate some force with this and you would not want this to come flying out of your hand in a campsite because then you've got a 14 inch curved razor blade flying through the campsite where you might accidentally injure someone. You can even get up. They have even thought about the fact if you needed to do some, I guess, detail work. I don't know, but you can get a hold of it here. So you've got so many multiple facets that you can hold onto this handle. 
And I love this because this is another one of those knives that just shows how good Cold Steel was at doing things that no one thought they could do and making it work. I, I joke about this being over the top and the time that, that they went too far. But the fact is that they took this. Someone was smart enough to make this work. The guys over at Cold Steel, uh, Lynn Thompson and all those guys, they absolutely were able to take this. And when other companies would have passed on an idea even close to this, they were like, F it, full send, let's do it. And it came out great. They really did do a good job on this. Now, this knife does have some some issues. It's It does have a misgrind. Uh, it absolutely is pretty asymmetrical, fairly chiseled at the tip. But you could always sharpen that out. But the fact is, for the most of the things you're going to do with this, it's going to be great. It is a little thick behind the edge. But like I said, this is like this is an all around thing that you could carry in a pack. And you've got the equivalent to a knife, a hatchet, a machete. It's all in it's an all in one package. And the, the action on it, I have to say, is very, very good to the point where even on this, like, this is a big knife even for my hands. I wear triple XL gloves. This is still very big. If you can get up on it, if you get it in the right position, get it in the right position, Mike. If you get way up on it, you absolutely can use that thumb disc and open it one-handed. And you can absolutely put this in a pouch. This thing is nuts. It's over the top. But I have to admit, I find myself oddly drawn to it. There are so many things about this knife that are so good. The lines on this knife are attractive. The way it feels in hand is amazing. Cold Steel has always been a company that's able to bridge that gap between full functional knives and the stuff that 14-year-old, 15-year-old Mike wanted. So you have a folding kukri. Who stands around and says that's what they want? Well, I guess... I guess I do. I guess the PDM in me still wants this knife. So this thing's incredibly, incredibly fun. And I've never done a video about one of them on the channel. And I thought you guys would just enjoy it. It's outside of the scope of things. This is not a functional EDC. This is not a knife that the majority of people would gravitate to. But, I mean, who else can say that they've got a... Who, what other company can say they made a folding knife that has a two-handed grip? I've seen swords that don't have a two-handed grip. I've seen swords that don't have a handle as big as this. This thing is possibly, of all the cold steel knives that were over the top, and this is the one that I think really just exemplifies the over-the-top thought process of everything that went into cold steel and i love it i love everything about it i think it's amazing i think it's fun this was something that i just did because i thought maybe you guys would enjoy it so we're not going to stick around and talk about it any longer you've already seen it you guys have seen the cold steel videos and things like that i just thought that it would be fun to take a look at it and actually have it on the channel so let's turn this around do some final thoughts and send you out about your day hopefully with a smile. So there you go, guys. The Raja 2. It's a little bit over the top. It's a lot like Lynn Thompson. Just a little bit over the top and a little bit more than most people can handle. It is definitely unique. Um, a big shout out to my buddy Tino for letting me borrow this. And another big shout out to Jeremy over at Decorry for shouting this channel out on Twitter. I definitely appreciate it. If you guys did not follow the quartering, you probably should. I know that he can be polarizing, but his stuff is a lot of fun. He does definitely do a lot of good work. So one of the hardest working creators out there. So guys, that's pretty much it on this one. This is a lot of fun. It is kind of unique. And I just thought it would be fun to take a look at it. And I intentionally did this. Don't let the intro fool you. I had thought this out. So if you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, give them a thumbs down. But tell me why I can't change the content. If you don't tell me what it is you don't like, unless it's just that you don't like me, well, then if that's the case, maybe you should just find a different channel, you know. But even those downvotes are considered interactions. YouTube doesn't differentiate. Um, 
If you guys want to support the channel, the best way to do it is like, share, subscribe, drop a comment, hit the bell icon. If you do hit the bell icon, make sure you've got it set to all and make sure you've got notifications turned on to your device so you get notified of the two videos that I'm working to do every day. I'm trying to do two a day and work into weekend content as well. Uh, other ways you can support the channel if you want to do it financially, there's a ton of affiliate links down below, including Jeremy's Coffee Company, Coffee Brand Coffee, which has a 5% discount if you use my coupon code crazy sharp, all one word. Um, but any of the, any of the affiliate links you use down below definitely support the channel directly. It doesn't cost you anything at checkout. Other ways you can do it, I have a membership. My membership is tier-based. If you uh, want to join, I have got a gilded server that everyone has access to where we chat and share things and we set up movie nights. Baseline and premium tier members have got are automatically entered into a giveaway that I do on the gilded server and the premium tier guys have access to a sharpening tutorial series here on YouTube behind that paywall. And the final way is I do have a merchandise store on Ember Shirt Co. where you can save 10% with my with my Coupon code crazy sharp, capital C, capital S, all one word, crazy sharp, saves you 10% at checkout over there at Ember Shirt Co. Some of the best quality shirts you're going to get with very good quality printing. So guys, that's it on this one. I love you all. Keep it clean in the comments section if it's your birthday. Happy birthday. And I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.